it's nearly the end of 2022 and you're still thinking about starting a watch business, whether that may be full-time or part-time. This video will give you seven steps to get started. This is based on my own experience of starting a watch business over a year ago, which is now at a point where it's more successful than any IT or finance job that I previously had. The first step to starting a watch business is just to have the confidence to start. If you wait until other people believe you know enough, you'll never start because you're never gonna know everything. Do not worry about what other people think or say about you. For someone to judge you or belittle you for starting a business or maybe the number of years of experience you have, it's only a reflection of their own insecurities, so don't listen. I think it should be celebrated that so many people want to start a business in the world of watches and look, you know, people's opinions can be heard, but they shouldn't be taken as gospel. We should never criticize somebody for wanting to follow their dreams by starting a business, just like we wouldn't criticize someone in the gym trying to lose weight and get fit and healthy. Everybody with any business had a day zero and they didn't know as much as they know now, so let's just remind ourselves of that. So have the confidence, just go for it. Imagine you're a racehorse with blinders on and all you can pay attention to is what's in front of you and nothing around you. The second step for starting a watch business is to know the fundamentals. It's obviously very helpful to have a passion for watches and to know as much as possible, but it's not mandatory to be passionate. Look, there are people that start businesses every single day that offer a product or service and they're not passionate about what they do necessarily. Obviously it helps and it's advantageous to enjoy and like what you do, but it's not essential. So what do I mean by fundamentals? Well, there are some basics you do need to know. For example, the different brands of watches, the different models that sit under those brands, the buying prices of those watches, and also what you're able to sell those watches at. Look, if you know those four things, there's absolutely no reason in theory why you can't start a watch business. It's actually so simple. People with watch businesses are so lucky that the products are that good that actually we don't need to sell, we don't need to convince somebody to buy the, the watches because the products, they are that good. They will sell themselves. However, it is likely that you're gonna get a bunch of questions, so it does help the more you know, but you might get questions like, how do I invest? Which watches should I invest in? What is my watch worth? Uh, should I sell the watch now? All these kind of things, it's very useful to know the answer to. A lot of the time it's just advice because there's no correct factual answer to most of these questions. It is very subjective. Knowing the fundamentals, knowing as much as possible will obviously be very helpful. If you're starting out and wanna learn more, you wanna do some research, I would advise going on the Hadinki website. They have multiple writers that post every single day about watches on their website. So go check out Hadinki or watch some other YouTube channels like Trotters or GMG Watches or David Cleo. The third way to start a watch business is to have a way of buying watches. It's general knowledge that dealers will sell to one another at trade uh, and that is literally a dealer will sell to another dealer at trade price where the price for the watch is a little bit lower than retail. This is one way to buy a watch and it allows you to buy cheaper than what you sell it for, but it's not the only way. Another way and arguably better is to buy from people that you know, the public, the end customers. So it could be your friends or family or people that you speak to on social media. From a business point of view, dealing with as many new private buyers in the public as possible is advantageous because you will end up having more customers potentially in the future to buy from and to also sell to. But it's very important to buy from somebody that you know and trust. It's not uncommon for someone to think they're getting a bargain price on a watch for it then to turn out to be a very high quality replica. Look, buy because of the person or the business, not always because of the price. It's not worth running the risk. Lastly, if you can run a watch business while still getting watches from an authorized dealer at retail price, then do it. It's absolutely your choice whether you do that or whether you choose not to. I know a lot of people that do this and if they don't go into the AD themselves personally, they'll have people that do it for them. And look, I understand the narrative around this and the flipping side of thing. I, 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 I get why it can be deemed as unfair, but it's just the reality of, of the world we live in. People will do this, not only in the watch industry, but in any walk of life. It just happens. It probably won't change, but look, if you're having troubles getting a watch from an AD, watch this video, it, it should help you. The fourth step to starting a watch business is to have a way of selling watches. A lot of the time selling a watch is actually the easiest part of this business and that doesn't sound quite right, but it's true. It's often harder to buy a watch at the right price versus 
selling a watch because most watches will just sell at the market price. What I mean by this is the way to make money is often determined by how cheaply you can buy a watch versus how expensive you can sell a watch for because we can't really control the market sale price of watches. For example, you could sell two black Submariners for £12,000 each, but one of them you bought from a distressed seller at £10,000 and the other one you bought at £11,500 from a trade group. One of those you made £2,000 margin and the other 500. Anyway, similar to how you buy a watch, you can either sell a watch back into trade or you can sell it to the public to an end customer. You would typically sell into trade for less than what you would sell to an end customer at, but I think having a, a good mix of both is ideal. Probably the most important thing about selling watches is that you have a consistent churn every day, every week. So for example, instead of waiting two, three more weeks to make an extra 500 pounds, it's probably best just to sell it a little bit cheaper, get the money back, reinvest it into another watch, and the hamster wheel continues to spin. The fifth step to starting a watch business is related to money. A big misconception about starting a watch business is that you need a lot of capital to get started and for the business to be successful in the future. Absolutely not true. Yes, having a million pounds injected into the business to be able to buy a bunch of watches is going to be very, very helpful, but it's just not necessary. Here are some of the ways of making your business work with very little capital invested. Other than using cash for an outright purchase, one of the most popular ways of selling a watch is via consignment. Consignment is very simple. You just help somebody sell their watch. I help man A sell their Rolex and in return, I take X percentage of the total sale price. Man A is happy because he probably got a better return. He probably got more money via consignment. And I'm happy as the watch dealer because I didn't have to outlay any cash to sell that watch. And plus, I make a little bit of a cutback as well as a consignment fee. Consignment is very useful for a watch dealer because it helps with their cash flow. And cash flow in the watch game is very, very important. Consignment deals for watch dealers are great because they don't have to outlay the cash, they can manage their cash flow better. And look, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't start a completely consignment-based watch business. Can't see why you couldn't do that. Another way is to partner up with somebody that you know, somebody that you trust. That way your cash exposure is halved and yeah, it means your risk is pretty much reduced by 50%. This is good for if you don't have the funds to fully invest yourself, but what that means is while your cash risk is halved, you also get half the revenue and half the profit and potentially half the decision making too. But look, be very, very careful if you do this. It might sound like a great idea and a bit of fun, but we've all heard the stories about co-founders disagreeing and things ending up not so sweet. The final way is what I did, and that is to grow your capital organically. You might start with five or 10,000 pounds, and with increasing sales over time, your cash position will grow and you'll be able to reinvest over and over again, growing the money pot quite substantially over time. The sixth step to starting a watch business is to actually set up a business. It's ideal to have the previous five steps covered before you do this, but either way, you're going to have to set up and register your business. And I recommend only doing this if you're absolutely certain that you want to be doing this for the foreseeable future, because there's quite a lot of admin work that you need to do to set up a business. For those based in the UK, you need to register a company on Companies House. You need to register for VAT if you earn revenue of over 85,000 pounds or so. You will need to open a business bank account, which you can do with a high street bank, or you can do that with a digital bank. You need to do finance admin. You need to be able to create invoices and purchase receipts for people you buy from and people you sell to. You need to file these documents so that your VAT is accurately reported to the government. If you can, I 100% recommend getting an accountant to manage all the finance admin for you because it does take a lot of your time. You can find a cheap accountant online or you can use a reputable accountancy firm. It doesn't really matter as long as they're doing the finance controlling and admin work for you you will save a bunch of time. You do not need a storefront, so a shop to start a business. You do not need an office to start a business. All you need is a safe place to keep your watches. If you actually have physical watches that you're selling, you might not keep them yourself. You can work from wherever you want when you're getting started. It's very simple. The seventh step to starting a watch business is to differentiate yourself. And this is probably the most important step here. Look, don't be so concerned if you feel like the watch market is oversaturated with watch businesses. It's it's probably a good thing. You know, more people are talking about watches than ever before. More people are selling watches. Think about it. Customers have more choice than ever before. So actually, that is a good thing. Obviously, it's important to stay vigilant when you're buying watches and when you're selling watches. But look, the important step here is to differentiate yourself. We live in a world now where if you're not taking advantage of social media and you're not promoting your business and your products on social media like YouTube, TikTok and Instagram, 
you're missing out. You're leaving money on the table. You're leaving business behind you and someone else is gonna take that business from you. You don't even need to pay for adverts on Instagram or Facebook or whatever it may be. Just focus on UGC. UGC is user generated content. Pick up your iPhone, get a camera, film some content and put it out there into the world. Somebody will watch it and they'll want to buy from you. And yes, people will judge you and people might not like what you do. It's inevitable and it's quite sad, but it's true. You can do Instagram posts, stories, Instagram lives, TikTok videos, YouTube long form videos, YouTube shorts. You can interview somebody about their collection. You can do exactly what I'm doing right now. It doesn't matter. It all helps with promoting your business. One thing I will say after making content for over three years online is that you have to be consistent and you have to apply yourself. You have to put time into it, but look, it will pay off. It will give you some rewards. You've just got to keep at it. But aside from how you market yourself, you can differentiate yourself in different ways. You might want to focus on vintage watches or you might want to focus on standard sports model Rolexes, but maybe you just offer them really, really cheap. Just find a way to do something a little bit better or a little bit different and you'll be winning. Whatever you do, make sure you've thought it through and make sure it will end up giving you a competitive advantage. Thanks guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.